Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I am so thrilled to have a very special guest here today. She went from being a professional ballet dancer to a camp girl to nabbing two AVN nominations all in just three years. And you might recognize her name from the headlines after her dating life went completely viral back in February. Welcome, Melissa Stratton. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you yeah. so much for coming. Yeah. So um, before we get into, I mean, I guess actually this will lead into how you started to get into the adult industry. But I'm yeah. really, I want to hear about your background in ballet. Oh, yeah. And we talked okay. a little bit about earlier about like how you were kind of a nerd when you were younger uh -huh. and like you weren't hot. And nope. so you had to develop this thing called a personality. I know. Terrible. Which Terrible way to grow up. Yeah, no, I definitely, um, I grew up moving around a lot. So I never had like a like a good core group of friends. And I think that's what really made me super nerdy. Mm. And so even now I consider myself like kind of an introvert. I'm very happy being alone, you know, some most of the time, whatever. So I feel like that I was a very weird, nerdy child. And then obviously doing ballet my whole childhood didn't make me any cooler, like mm -hmm. at all. Um, because, you know, every day after school I was in the studio and every summer I would go to summer programs, you know, nationwide or um, – internationally and I was really good and it was about high school where I was like man I don't know if I really want to do this I kind of want to finally have a normal life um and so I was apprenticing with a company and I just kind of like burned out and was like I don't want to do this okay so then a couple years pass I get my degree I work in the professional field and I have like a jokingly like a midlife crisis I mean I'm only 34 but I was still like back then I was like no, you know, that's my biggest regret in life is that I never pursued ballet. So I just randomly decided to pick it up one day, trained myself for a year. Um, you know, I was in the studio every day, had my point shoes on every day. You know, I was trained yourself like you didn't have a trainer? No, I mean I would go take ballet class, okay. but like I knew what I was doing because I was at a professional level before I quit. Um, so why I'm telling you this, I took a pretty big gap trained myself for a year, auditioned for a bunch of companies and got in. Mm -hmm. So I danced professionally for two years and was like oh my God, I remember why I didn't do this my whole life because it is so incredibly difficult, but I definitely had like a gift and a love and an affinity for it. And I'm really glad I got to like accomplish that dream. I wish I would have done it when I was younger. You it's know? crazy like how, it's amazing what you can do with your body. As oh, a you can do anything. And like literally. the way it fucks mm -hmm. your feet up though. Oh like, yeah, look at these things. Look at them. They look like, fine to no, me. No, this one was broken. That one has like a big callus on it. So when I do like foot fetish scenes, I'm always like, are you sure you want me? Really? <laughs> I was just going to ask these? you. <laughs> okay. You know, you get you get that toe and this broken toe in a dude's mouth and you're just kind of like, Ugh. You, know? you don't want to put on your consent checklist like, don't suck my third toe from the, on my left foot, you know. But so you, you just can. let it ride. You can. You can. But like, you know, that's that's a me problem. So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> but yeah. But I mean, it's 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 so physically rigorous. And does yeah. it, you know, there's rumors that it encourages eating disorders. Do, do oh, you feel absolutely. Like that's true? When I was dancing, no. Um, because I was working out. I'm, I was naturally very thin. I was working out hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. So you take class for two hours in the morning. You'd go straight to rehearsal. You'd work out on your lunch break. If you didn't have rehearsal in the afternoon, you'd go for a run. You'd do conditioning. Like you're moving your body all day. So it's really easy to stay really slim. But on the off periods or when I quit and your body changes, that was the worst for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm about 20 pounds heavier right now than I was when I was dancing. Which is crazy because like you're not. You wouldn't recognize me. My face was like a little skeleton. It was like yeah. very. But I was still on the bigger side for a ballerina. You need to be 110 or under for guys to be able to lift you. And I've always had like thicker legs. I think that's what my fans love about me, but my directors always hated it. They were like, you have to slim those thighs down. You you stand out, you're too bottom heavy, you know? And so that fucked with me a lot. So that's interesting because I always thought that it was like this mm -hmm. aesthetic, right? That you it would is. be It's about thin. your line. But it's also, I mean, mm -hmm. it's about the guys being able to lift you. Yes, so it's there about, is a function like, to it too. Yeah. You don't want to be the big girl. You don't want to be the one that when they pick you up, they're like, ugh. <laughs> you know, that was always like, fuck, how am I going to go? I can go have a green juice for lunch, you know? Won't be eating this week. Thanks. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Fucking Todd. <laughs> so it's just like, whatever. Wow. Okay. So, but I mean, that definitely must have instilled like a real sense of discipline in you. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely made me who I am in terms of like this type A perfectionist personality. I'm always concerned with aesthetic and being prepared and whatever. And I love that about myself. I mm -hmm. wouldn't change that, but it is a really um, 
kind of mentally demanding way to live your life. Yeah. You know, I'm one of those so people. It's a challenge. So I get it. Yeah, yeah. The type A, the Virgo. Yeah, I mean, you know, you are you a Virgo too? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I didn't stand a chance. Right? What's your birthday? Fourteenth. So okay, November mine's 14th. the fifth. Oh, nice. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. That's why I like you. Yeah. You know, we're both like. Good. Well, I, but you're being very nice to me right now. So I'm oh, hoping shit. that yeah. after Fuck the podcast. You, Holly. Is, okay. You thank know? you. I feel so much better. I know. I was telling Holly before we started, my love language is like sarcasm and kind of like a mean sense of humor. So if I'm too nice, be be scared because that's, then yeah. I don't like you. So sorry. Yeah. She was being way too nice to me. So. I told her I wanted to be on my best behavior. I'm trying. <laughs> Well, I know yeah. we're actually like on a podcast and we're trying yeah. to like put yeah put well, forth a certain part of ourselves which yeah. is maybe better forward facing yeah. well, doesn't do mean feel, that it's not who you are yeah well and I do feel the pressure now especially with being in the media lately to like show people who I really am because mm -hmm. people like to make assumptions they like to say mean things they like to draw conclusions that weren't there and so I do feel that extra pressure to be like no no I I am totally chill and normal I'm not you know, so yeah, I always try to put my best foot forward. Yeah. Well, well, we will get to that for sure. Yes, yeah, totally. Um, I do want to talk about um, a little bit more about your beginnings. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when you started, you didn't actually show your face, right? No, I didn't. I so, was so shy. Yeah. I was so shy. I. We actually never talked about your leap. Your leap. Oh, from my God. <laughs> into, into the, the adult grand industry. The so, yeah. into the adult industry. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I had left ballet, was doing graphic design. COVID happens. And um, I was bored and I was lonely and I was curious and I had seen Chatterbait and that is still the only platform I've ever cammed on. I love them. I do a lot of work for them, um, you know, with their corporate and their events and stuff. And I just, I was so grateful that I found them first because it's a very broad um, audience, a little bit of everything, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of, kind of wild, kind of wild west, I feel like when you're camming on Chatterbait specifically because it is a freemium model. So mm -hmm. people don't have to pay to watch you, if, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't set it up that way. So I was really nervous about that because I do come from a very conservative background. You know, I know the internet's a wild place. I didn't know what to expect. Okay. So I would sit there with just my lips and my tits mm -hmm. and that was it. And I would talk and I would flash and I would just like whatever. And that first night, I think I made $150 like just doing that. And for me, that was a lot of money. I thought that was so cool, mm -hmm. and I was hooked. And how I long think were I you on it. for? Oh, maybe an hour. Okay, or so two. that's not bad. One hundred fifty dollars in an hour isn't bad. Uh, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. So I, I thought that was so cool, and so yeah, I was, I hooked ever since. And I think about two months in, I started showing my face. Or I would do privates, and I would, because people were like, "What's wrong with your face?" <laughs> right? What's wrong? Do you, are your Actually, eyes fucked up? I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay, look, I got this eye, and then I would like dip down to the screen and be like, and then there's that eye. So like, you know, I'm I have like, both whatever. my eyes. Yeah, and so I would, I started, yeah, I started going private and stuff, and the reaction I got was so positive and so wonderful, and I was like, yeah, you know what? If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have to jump in with both feet, mm -hmm. and so then I just started showing my face and. The money was much better when mm. I was showing my face and showing everything and using toys and you know whatever. It, yeah. But it was a slow kind of progression for me, right. of like taking things at my pace. But yeah. look at me now. Yeah, look at you <laughs> now. Look at you now. Yeah. So, how did you make the jump, mm -hmm. the leap? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What are your the, the little relevé? The the what? <laughs> no, <laughs> you know the little yeah, the little jump. I can't. I don't know why What's I'm trying it called? to my fingers. On a chicot. On chicot. Uh huh. On a chicot. Fork. On Chicot. Mm -hmm. Okay, on, on Chicot. Chicot. How'd you make the on Chicot into <laughs> no, studio porn? Um, so that was really funny. I had gone to an expo with Chatterbait and was approached by um, one of the producers at Browsers. And they were like, Who? You have a great Chris. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe it was going to be Kieran. Oh, it's always no. Kieran. Oh, it's always Kieran. It's always Kieran. No, He's always no. like pulling the girls in. Right. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and he did. He did that too. Yeah. I have. I did work with him Kieran's soon after good that. Scout. No, but it, he was. He was actually kind of shy and like very normal guy. And he was like, uh, you know, he kind of like talked to me sideways. He's like, really sweet. He is so sweet. We're yeah. good friends to this day. Yeah. You know. And I don't know if he likes when I tell this story, but I. He came up to me and was like, you know, if you ever, you got a great look. You know, if you ever wanted to do a scene, we'd love to work with you, figure it out, whatever. And I was like, okay, whatever, dude. Like, gross. Everybody was, you know, always trying to get something from me, you know, like huh. whatever. And I stood there and I saw I saw him walk back over to the browser's booth and and I was like, wait a second. That would be really cool. Maybe I do want to do porn. I didn't realize that what I was doing online was porn. Mm -hmm. You know, it, yeah. I thought it was a different category. I thought it I thought it was different. And um 
so I remember it probably took me about five minutes and then I ran back over to him and my little like six inch pleasers and was like, actually, Chris, um, can we talk? I think that would be really cool. And he was like, yeah, whatever you want. So we had a couple conference calls talking about what type of scene I would want. And then a couple weeks later, I was in Miami shooting three scenes for browsers. Wow. Yeah. And how did it go? What was your first scene like? It was amazing. I wanted it to be a threesome. I kind of wanted it to like start off with a bang. I love men and women. I was like, let's just if we're going to do it, let's do it. Yeah. Um, so I got to work with two amazing performers. And yeah, I mean, they treated me like a princess too, right? Yeah. They, they fly you out. They, Brothers is really good but, about that. Yeah. So I I think I got a really um, amazing intro to the industry. Yeah. You know? Who did you, who were who were the two people in your first scene? Um, it was Oliver Flynn and okay. Imani Black. So okay. it was like this perfect little brunette mashup, you yeah. know, and Oliver was like great, handled us and stuff. But that was also the scene of people always ask you like, you know, what's your most embarrassing moment in porn? And it was my first scene um, because I have always had a birth control ring, the Anovera, which is like the Nuva ring, mm -hmm. and his dick got stuck in it <laughs> and he pulled it out. You know, in like your first scene, you're still not like comfortable with your body and yeah, you're just yeah, like, yeah. oh my God, like what, you know, and they're so, I mean, he pulled it off. I was like, is this yours? Like, you know, whatever. And they were like, cut, you know? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so, I don't know. I don't. And so I like put it on a little towel and like set it to the side. I was just dying. Yeah. I was like mortified. Yeah. And now I just, I have no qualms about being naked or yeah. bodily functions, you yeah. know? But it's funny how quickly that stuff becomes very normal. Very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I joke that we're a little bit, we're kind of like doctors about yeah. things where it's like nothing grosses you out if a, yeah. if a co stars like do i have something on my butt you'll yeah. be like oh yeah here give me that baby wipe you know it's like oh, i've wiped down people's yeah bottles, their vaginas their butt like right everything. i've pulled uh sponges out of girls oh of course yeah that's yeah. pretty yeah i mean i not with these nails no. so you'd be helping me out no i was just gonna say if you showed up with those nails to a girl girl scene no i would there's never no, there's no i would never happening i have enough respect for um <laughs> My my fellow females that I would not not try to put these inside anyone. Have you seen Jules Blue's manicure? She does like the lesbian the manicure. Two, the two shorts. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. I have never seen but that. How do you pick which hand? Because I I get a little ambidextrous, so oh. I'd have to just. And then if you got four short nails, why are they long? I think she's a one-handed. She's a right-hander. One-handed. I look for that. Yeah, I'm like, oh, she's got two short yeah. nails. Like. It's kind of like the, it's also like the Coke nail. If they have like one long finger yeah. nail, one long pinky <laughs> you're nail, like, you're like, you're like, I oh, know what you do with you're, that. You're fun. You're a party oh person. God, but if they got so two true. short ones here, then. Yeah. Then she's We're looking for the, the two, ladies. The two short ones. Yeah. Or guys. I mean, I guess you could finger a butthole like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Two would be unique, but. What? Yeah. Two. I don't know. Isn't it the same as like a vagina? No. I feel like. <laughs> You know better than that. Well, come I, on. I think when I think of like men's buttholes, it's like one finger or it's like a toy. Mm. You know, so or either way, like, you gotta have one short. Or it's like a Michael Vegas massive fucking dick, strap on dick. The things that that Dude, guy can take in his ass. Is these dudes go so impressive. It is honestly, yeah. So I don't do professional anal yet, and I'm always very impressed. Are you planning on it? Hmm. I go back and forth. I don't get any requests for it, even from my fans. So interesting. I just, I think my fans really enjoy the vanilla side of me. Even when I try to like push it a little bit, try to do a scene that's kind of outside the box. Sometimes it doesn't do as well, hmm. you know. What and it is I, like your niche, you would say. I think it's pretty vanilla boy girl. Okay. You know, it, it, vanilla in terms of porn, right? Right. You know. Um, and I'm fine with that. I When I started, I didn't know what my brand was and who I was and whatever. So I kind of let the internet tell me. Mm -hmm. And I still do that to this day. I'm mm -hmm. like, what do you guys want to see? What do you guys, you know, I'm, I'm checking my analytics. I'm looking at what's working. And it's has stayed in kind of this like vanilla girlfriend, classy category. And that's perfect because that's really who I am. So yeah. It's yeah. nice to not have to try to pretend to be, be something I'm not. And I wasn't going to do that anyway. Yeah. But at the same time, like you can kind of stay to one kind of style of scene or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Do you find that you do a lot of like ballet themed scenes? No, no. I just did my first one for Seth Gamble. We did it in a studio. It was kind of like Black Swan themed. Yeah, you know? I saw the trailer for and it. And I kept my point shoes on the whole time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was one part I was doing like reverse cowgirl on my toes. Wow. You know, he's like laying on the ground and, and I'm reverse like, is already like the already so hard. Position. He was holding me up, but no, it actually worked pretty well. It was kind of wow. wild. That's me. So yeah, that was, that was really fun. That's crazy that yeah. like, I mean, I would think that that would be the one thing that 
you would be. Well, I think to too, I didn't advertise a lot that I did ballet because for a long time it was kind of a painful memory because it was so personal to me. I wanted to like have a life outside of ballet. I, you know, it, it kind of took me a while to like reheal my relationship with ballet. Now I look back at it incredibly fondly, but mm -hmm. I think maybe when I started, I didn't lead with that. It's yeah. so interesting because I actually, so I, a lot of people don't know this because I don't talk about it because mm -hmm. I also have like a weird relationship with it though. I don't yeah. think nearly as strongly as you, but like for me, I was an equestrian mm. my whole life mm -hmm. and I rode horses and it was, yeah. it was my mother's dream for me to go to the Olympics. Yep. And I did three day eventing and I qualified for the junior Olympics. Oh my God. And then I quit right at right. high school before I went to college because I wanted a life outside of horses. Mm -hmm. Horses was mm -hmm. my life. Yeah, you had the time. exact same. I didn't really have a lot of friends mm -mm. like you. I mm -mm. was like very introverted. So I like still like we have three horses at our place. Mm -hmm. and I don't ride. That's ever. crazy. Yeah. 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 So yeah, you get it. Sometimes you, uh, your passions ebb and flow through life. Yeah. You know, and so like when Seth asked me to do that um, scene, I like went back into the studio and took a couple classes and it was hard. It's really hard. If you're not taking ballet every day, your body really does like deteriorate. Your flexibility goes away. Like you're just, you don't move the same. So it was even hard just to get back in the studio for those couple, you know, it was mentally yeah, kind of wild. No, I can imagine. Yeah. And I'm sure that like other people see the way that you're moving and the things that you're doing and they think it's so incredible because it's so far beyond like what we're capable of. Mm -hmm. But you probably felt all of the things that you could no longer do. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my leg's not like as high in this extension as it used to be. My back's not as flexible. Like I was, and even in this scene, I'm like, oh, my elbows are down and like my back's kind of sticking out. And, you know, like I pick myself apart really hard when it comes to ballet. Yeah. Because that's what you're trained to do. Right. You know? Yeah. No, absolutely. So. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk um, a little bit more about Melissa's career, plus also, of course, why she was recently in the news and so much more. So <laughs> stick around. We'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. No, it's not a new chewy candy, but it sure is sweet for some folks. Now, imagine this. The same key ingredients that power Viagra and Cialis, but in a fun, chewable form. No more sneaking around to the doctor or playing hide and seek with the pharmacy clerk. Blue Chew brings the magic right to your doorstep. Discreetly, of course. Because nobody needs to know your business unless you want them to. Now, why am I whispering sweet nothings about Blue Chew into your ear? Simple, because nothing spells sexy like confidence. And Blue Chew, well, it's like the wingman you never knew you needed, ensuring that you're more than just ready when the lights dim and the playlist switches to slow jams. So for those of you eager to see what the fuss is about, Blue Chew is rolling out the red carpet for our listeners with a special offer. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code HOLLY to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and safety information. And remember, chew it and do it. All right, guys, we are back. So obviously you've had like a very successful career so far, even yeah. though like you're still in the, the- Still new. Still new. Yeah, yeah it's only been so. two years of studio porn. Yeah. You know, and I just, it feels like dog years. It feels like I'm doing it forever. Yeah. But then I'm also like, I'm just barely getting started. Yeah. You, know? you recently did a, a movie with my dear friend, Mike Quasar. My dear friend. My dear friend. My dear friend. My friend. I'll fight you for him. Oh. He is so wonderful. I love Mike Quasar, like family, you yeah. know? Like he's just, he's one of the best people in this industry because he's, he's one so of the people that honest. brought you up to me like quite a few times. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, he, I credit him with like discovering me, right? Like, like Brazzers gave me like first scenes and stuff, but he brought me in made me feel like I was good at what I did, that I was talented, and then continued to hire me, mm -hmm. like right off the bat. Yeah. And I was like, okay, if this industry veteran has this opinion of me, I can have some confidence moving forward about asking for jobs and like, you know, making my own content and stuff. So I really credit him, like him with a lot of like my first, and my he's, first year. Important. He's got great insight. Like if I want yeah. to know something about a new performer, mm -hmm. I know he's probably shot them because he shot yeah. shoots so much. And I will call him and be like, "What is this person like?" Yeah. Or he'll be like, "Hey, you got to shoot this person. Mm -hmm. They're great." Like he and he doesn't mince words. Like he's no. very honest. I think he reads people really well yes. too, which I think we kind of see eye to eye on that. Yeah. Like I've been on set with him where somebody like says something and we just look at each other like, 
okay you know you got that. yeah that was fucking weird you know like <laughs> so tell me about this the newest comedy that he's put oh you in oh my god it's called so extra and it's it, it's a little feature um that follows a girl and her boyfriend they come out from um fish creek wisconsin mm-hmm. little small town and i grew up mostly in the midwest so that was easy for me um to you know it's a little it's it's a comedy it's definitely a comedy and it's um very you were saying it's very like meta with all its like inside porn jokes yeah. and the different roles that people have and kind of like the way we talk about LA the experience of living in LA yeah. as a porn star um so yeah so this girl and her boyfriend they moved to LA um she they both want to be actors but they can't get any roles so she ends up being an extra on porn sets and kind of gets her boyfriend involved and he's like what the fuck is this and you'll see um it obviously ends exactly how you think it's going to end and <laughs> it was wonderful to to be a part of it was really cool what was one of your favorite scenes because there's a lot of really good oh ones there. i have so many good ones but there's a trailer of me like opening the door saying like different lines like how could you that's your stepdaughter <laughs> and then like how could you that's that's your step grandma yeah, like, like a montage all these ridiculous yeah. things we say in porn <laughs> that we like could barely get that out you know that was it was just ridiculous and then there's a whole scene about um uh one of them get one of the actors getting cucked and this whole like weird like well why would you do that why would you sit here and watch your wife get fucked you know mm-hmm. and he's like that's the point like you enjoy it he's like why do i enjoy this like yeah. you know so that was just even funnier too and i had to i didn't have any lines in that i had to just stand there with a straight face which was terrible because <laughs> i was just like think of something else think of something else car crashes and dying kittens and you know because like they were so funny and it is porn at the end of the day is ridiculous and i think that's why i like mike so much yeah. is we're always like oh it's the most ridiculous it's a joke it's, much, it's such a ridiculous you job. know you're you're in a room of like 10 people getting fucked and then you're cutting and getting fucked in a different position i mean it's laughable sometimes yeah, yeah. So we definitely poked a lot of fun at those kind of realities in this feature. Yeah. So. I mean, I think it's like, it's one of those things that I know that Mike definitely does this as well. Like we try to do our jobs as professionally and yeah. as well as possible because mm-hmm. we understand like people are giving us a lot of money to turn in a product yeah. that they're selling. Like it's a business like mm-hmm. anything else, but it's also like, it's a bit silly. It's very silly. It's, it's quite silly. It's very silly. And, um, but it, you know, people love it, you know, and people enjoy it. So well, and we love making it. Yeah. I love that absurdity of it. You know, I mean, I do take it very seriously, but sometimes you step back and you're like, did I just get paid for that? Like, yeah. it's <laughs> this is the best job in the world. I love yeah. it. I love and it. I think that you enjoy it more if you see that it's a bit silly. Yes. You know? Yeah. People that take themselves too seriously, I feel like are constantly disappointed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because for as um, professional as you can make porn, it's also, I find it to be very casual atmosphere you know what i mean we're talking about being on time yeah. and you know just knowing your lines yeah you know it's like eh, yeah it's just born yeah you know yeah oh my gosh <laughs> um so you also uh were on stage at avn this year yes yeah um, and you did present. some presenting how was that that was I was so nervous for it the days leading up because you're on stage in front of all of your peers and people that don't know you mm-hmm. and you know your outfit matters how you carry yourself matters how you speak you know like your I, outfit was very was very different thank you yeah what outfit yeah right yeah no i did a i did a black um satin like bikini kind of lingerie set but then i had a very expensive gucci runway jacket yeah that i carried with me so i was kind of naked well it was interesting because you would like wear it mm-hmm. and, and it was then very you'd conservative. like conservative open it yeah and then and you're like, like oh yeah. there's my outfit why not you hey know? it was it was different and yeah. it definitely like stood out yeah oh thanks yeah that's so. what i was going for i just you know avian is so cool because we're in the porn industry you can literally do whatever you want. You can dress as sexy as you want. You can dress as crazy as you want. You can make a statement. You can just do what makes you feel comfortable. And yeah. I was like, why wouldn't I? Yeah. You know? So being, I mean, I know that you haven't been in the industry like terribly long, but obviously no. you're a very smart person, organized person. Thank you. You seem to understand how to do things in a way that makes sense for you. Yeah. Even though you're only three years in, mm-hmm. what would you have done differently maybe at the beginning? Ooh. Or do you have advice for new girls? Yeah, I think you're you learn so fast on the job because no one's telling you what to do you are literally figuring it out on your own Mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons one i think that everyone's journey is different so there isn't a good template for how to do things but 
some of the things I think I did really well was I started an LLC and a business bank account right away. Mm -hmm. I feel like people don't realize that lo the logistics of making money as a contract employee is very complicated and you don't want to mess that up. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you were like me, I was making more money than I ever had right off the bat. Yeah. And you have to be very careful with that. Um, another one too, and it's a sticky area. We kind of talked about this is like, I knew that to get into the industry and do the kinds of shoots that I wanted to do right away, um, you know, I didn't want to do a lot of casting couch. I didn't want to do kind of low budget stuff. I, I needed an agent. I needed an agent to speak on my behalf and be like, listen, she's got her, her shit together. She can perform. She can, you know, somebody to kind of vouch for me. So I liked being with an agency right off the bat. But you have to be so careful about who you choose. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's just no way of knowing. Yeah. So at the everybody end of the day, everybody seems so great. Before everybody seems so contract. great. And this is like across the board with like everything, yeah. right? And like the more yeah. business deals I've done um, over the years, like I'm pretty anal about contracts now. Mm -hmm. And I have like a very expensive Good. lawyer that looks at stuff. And I'm like, sure. I nitpick about shit because yeah. I've been caught in a position mm -hmm. so many times where I'm like, well, I don't need to worry about this. These people are so great. Look how nice they are. Look what they're promising me. It's all going to be fine. And like, it's the weirdest shit happens mm -hmm. and like stuff goes upside down. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, I wish I had been more picky about what was in my car. Exactly. Or had somebody on your side to advocate for you. Because yeah. like, I didn't even know what I was signing and what I was getting myself into and what was standard and what wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. like there's, when you're new, it's so easy to get taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So having an agent or a business manager or somebody that you trust on your side is wonderful, but finding that person is really difficult. So yeah. at the end of the day, you are responsible for your future and your business and yourself. That's number one. Do not rely on anyone else. Use them to help you, but rely on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, can't trust anybody. No. You literally can't. You literally can't. And it's sad, but and, it's true. But it's, I think, I look at it in like a good way as it's like, this is on you to be yeah. successful, right? Yeah. Like, it's not that I can't trust anyone, but don't, don't rely on anyone's trust to get ahead. Yeah. You know, promises of like, oh, well, if you do this, we'll give you this scene, like that kind of stuff. You know, I remember one time, uh, and this is probably why you should have an agent, is um, I showed up on set. I had only only ever shot girl, girl for this company. And then I go and shoot boy, girl. And I noticed they had like crossed out my rate and like filled in some of the paperwork for me. And I mentioned to the director, like, do you know my rate for this scene? He was like, oh, they handle that at corporate. They'll be fine, whatever. I get my check. It's $300 short. And I was like, what is this? And they were like, oh, that's the rate we pay for boy girl mm -hmm. and I was like well that's not my rate why yeah like I need and they were like well we would have never approved that rate yeah and I was like okay well I will not be working for you anymore yeah and that's you something know? you definitely want to sort out beforehand because right. it's like you don't want to get to well, set I tried kind of I tried of like, you know I was like what is this and like right. and I talked to them like you know this is incorrect like whatever and people in the industry have had different opinions on that like you should have fought harder well there's a lot going on in my life at the time $300 wasn't worth the fight yeah you know what I mean yeah yeah but I feel like that happens, that type of situation, like the money situation has happened more to me on set than like anything else, mm. you know, in terms of like bad experiences and whatever. So was this before you had an agent or you did not have an agent at the time that this happened? I, that was when I was in between agents. Yeah. Right. So, so, which is also very confusing, right? Yeah. They don't know where to send the paperwork. They don't know if they should be talking to you. They don't, you know, and so it's just, yeah, you, you always have to be on top of it. Yeah, Something it's always good to way. get something in writing. A lot of times yeah. I will like, mm -hmm. if I have a meeting with somebody or a conversation with someone, I'll send them a follow-up email and I'll be like, okay, yeah. so this is what was discussed. This is the rate, yeah. this is et cetera. Like, I love great. to over-communicate. Oh, me too. You know? Yeah. And even if I, even if somebody doesn't get back to me, I'll just send it again or, you know, yeah. it's like you can't take any of that personal. Yeah. Um, But it's interesting how there's a lot of ego at play. I feel like some people are either like young or don't come from a professional background. So a lot of things get lost in translation. Totally. You know, but you just have to keep doing what you do. Yeah. In order to make your business successful. Yeah. I think what a lot of people don't realize about adult stars is that you're all small independent businesses yeah. and you're all essentially entrepreneurs. Yeah. And I think it surprises people that most porn stars don't have business agents. I mean, business managers. No. A lot of like celebrities do. Right. So they deal with all of that. Right. But like, yeah, you'll have your business manager, your agent, your assistant, your, your finance, accountants. your lawyer, yeah. Yeah. your PR. It's a yeah, whole we got nothing. People. It's nothing. Me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I do, I do have assistants now, but yeah, it was 
yeah life. no it's no. it's a lot it's a lot mm-hmm. and um i i think that, that all the time for myself often i'm like god i wish i had a manager because yeah. it's just like it's a lot for me it and is. i have a lot going on but also like make enough money to have, like pay a manager that's the thing people so are like, like oh porn you must be making so much and like all of a sudden it's like i mean yes and no from yeah. what i was making and whatever i'm incredibly happy with what i have now yeah but in the grand scheme of things it's not anything like celebrity money yeah it's not anything like professional actor money but, yeah so yeah you can't afford a whole team of people and the problem is is like you're generally not getting residuals on stuff no never. right so you're not making a movie and you're getting like money down the road on anything like time sure you may be making a lot of money on your only fans but you have to continue to produce mm-hmm. content mm-hmm. for that so it's like it's that's never, hardly residual yeah. no it's exactly like, that's it's Locking never in too. there's no like passive in, there's almost like not no really. passive income coming not in. not really that's really hard to mm-hmm. establish yeah 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 but that's i mean i like the challenges of this industry right you know right so um the internet freaked out yeah. super bowl weekend <laughs> when news broke that you were dating sean evans who hosts hot ones something yeah. i've literally never watched but I guess it's people eat <laughs> hot wings and then talk about things. Yeah, yeah. So he hosts a show where they they do like wing. They have a celebrity on and they eat wings in increasingly spicy sauces. So it's like one wing is like mild, the next one's a little hotter, and by the end of it, they like can't feel their face. And that's crazy because like I grew up, not grew up. It hasn't been on that long, but like I've seen his show many times. So when he DM'd me on Insta, I thought for sure it wasn't him. So we kind of like went back and forth a little bit. And turns out he's from Chicago. I live there. Um, we met up a few times, like whatever, and totally hit it off. And mm-hmm. I was like, this is so cool to meet somebody that you've seen on the internet and they're even more wonderful in person. Right. You know, so I was excited. So um, how long did you guys date for? A couple months. A couple months. Yeah, it was a couple months. It was right around, I would say, like, Thanksgiving. And it was, like, just after Halloween, like, kind of Thanksgiving. When it, we started, like, talking, like, all the time and, like, right. meeting up. Because he uh, he comes to L.A. a lot, too. So I would be here. We'd So we were, like, out in public doing things quite often, mm-hmm. you know? Like, we were – so then the Super Bowl happens in January. And he's, like, do you want to come? And I didn't think – well, first I was, like, don't you want to bring, like, one of your guy friends or, like, your family or whatever? Mm-hmm. He's, like, no, I really want to bring you. I think you'd appreciate it. Because I did live in Kansas City and I'm a huge Chiefs fan. And okay. And we in the Super Bowl. So I was freaking out. I was, like, I'm not going to say no. Like, are you kidding me? Um, So we went, but I – um, yeah, as far as I knew, uh, he was comfortable with my job and comfortable with being seen with me and – you know all of that and uh yeah it kind of wasn't the case <laughs> so so essentially what happened was there was a news story that broke that said mm-hmm. that he was dating a porn star of yep. course um and then was it that or was it adam 22's tweet no it was that yeah no it wasn't adam okay and i i told adam this because i consider adam a friend we work together quite a bit and i um and sean knew adam yeah like so i'm like oh you know, you got to have a good sense of humor yeah. about what I do, right? Yeah. You know, and, and it's I like, you know him, I know he him. Is fun. Like, you're Adam? a funny person. Oh, well, Sean. no, no, not Adam. I, Sean. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that, like, he's a great sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He's very intelligent, very witty. And so, yeah, we had, like, fun. But it, I, yeah, I mean, I never asked him specifically if that was, like, part of the reason, but it was already on the way out before that tweet came up. So, right. it's like, whatever. So Adam says, he responds to that story and says, congratulations, Sean, her pussy is fire. <laughs> Which is a great compliment. I Wait, I, which I thought was funny. I just remember Lena's follow-up <laughs> comment. She's like, on when Valentine's your husband Day. tweets about another girl on Valentine's Day, yeah. which obviously she said with a sense of humor as well, because, yeah. you know, yeah. she's also And funny. I love Lena, yeah. yeah. she was. I think she asked me, she's like, if I post this, just know it's a joke. And I was yeah. like, okay. Because yeah. I don't, I'm a girl's girl. I don't want any, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm not yeah. here to, yeah. So I was like, okay, whew. Like, she thought it was funny too. But. Yeah. So... And then, then like, what happened after that? He okay. just, like, called you and was like, it's over or? Yeah. 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 Wow. It was like, I can't take it. This, this is too much heat. Uh, the, the details are between me and him, right. you know. But, yeah, it was just one brief phone call and that was it. And I'm totally fine with that because I've said before, I don't want to be with somebody that doesn't want to be with me. Mm-hmm. Don't give me these fucking mixed signals. I'm also aware that what I do is not for everyone. 
and you are totally within your rights to change your mind at any time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think one of the biggest problems with our new relationship was that he wanted to get to know me for me. And I loved that. I really thought this was like a strong connection and whatever. So when it came to what I did, I don't think he did enough research, even though we would talk about it a little bit and I would tell him about my scenes a little bit. I don't think he knew the extent. So when other people were like posting my scenes and like, look at how many dicks she's taken and like all this stuff, he was like, whoa. Yeah. So that's not my fault. No. You know what I mean? You didn't do your research. I I Googled the hell out of you when we started dating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I I just wanted to make sure I knew what I was getting into. Right. Um. So it's just, yeah, I guess maybe he didn't do the same or didn't care until everybody else knew. So Yeah. And it's, I mean, it is hard. It's a lot of heat for someone to take. Mm-hmm. And there's just not a lot of guys. Nice pun about <laughs> a hot one show. Oh, right. You know, everyone's like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> you know, but I think in this day and age, two consenting adults, like, who cares? Yeah. Like, I knew there would probably be some, like, initial flack because he does seem like such a buttoned-up person. He doesn't seem like the kind of person that would date someone like me. Um, But in my head, I was like, that'll blow over. Yeah. You know? Like, and it already has, so. Do you feel like the pu- that some of the pressure came from, like, his publicist or, like, his... Oh, for sure. Like, from yeah. the business side, not even friends. A couple weeks ago, it was, like, BuzzFeed sold vice or I can't remember how the conglomerate goes, but they retained like whatever. So I think there was more behind the scenes that I didn't know about in terms of like big money. So there's some pretty crazy shit that they put in your contract. Sometimes Mm I was talking to somebody I won't, I won't name her because I know Mm -hmm. she wouldn't appreciate that, but she had signed a contract with like a big mainstream company to do a show. And like the shit that was in her contract was wild. Really? Yeah, like she couldn't be seen at certain places. Mm. She couldn't be seen with certain people. And this is someone who Fair worked enough, in you know? the sex world. Oh, oh. Even. Interesting. You know? Yeah. like, Well, I think that's what hurt me a lot in the comments and the whatever is people were like, well, if he wanted to keep it private and you knew he wanted to keep it private, why did you post about it on IG or on mm-hmm. Twitter? And it was like, that's not the reality of the situation. We were out in public. I had posted... I hadn't like I never tagged him mm-hmm. to you know like there was, he was just there in my pictures, and the what the main photo is us at a club together, which the photographer the club photographer came over and was like, "Can I get a picture of you two? And I turned to him and I go, "Do you want a photo with me?" And he goes, "Of course," you know, puts arm around me. We take a photo. The club photographer sends it to him, and then he sent that photo to me, and I said, "Can I post it?" And he goes, "Yeah, sure." So like, what did I do wrong? Yeah. You know, and people are like, oh, you're just that typical girl trying to like get some clout, whatever. And I go, well, that was the person I was dating and I was proud of him. And I thought he was proud of me. Yeah. Fucking shoot me. You know? And it sucks too that you even have to ask him those questions. But I did that because I was sensitive towards his career, knowing right. that he interacted but with celebrities and stuff. It does that suck. You are put in that position. It does, but like I not made, I made him. the bed of I'm being in porn. Right. I know the stigma that comes yeah, with yeah, yeah. it, and it's never gonna go away. Right. So that that didn't even bother me. But I, I agree. Yeah. Does it suck? Sure. But it's my reality. So right. whatever. I just mean it on like a bigger level, not him. Yeah. I'm just talking about society in general. Oh, yeah. And like the stigma that, that comes yeah. about with that in yeah. general. I Se- mean, sex work in general. Even my bad. husband, who I've been with for over seven years, mm-hmm. um, who's not a celebrity, mm-hmm. but he works in law, I'm like mm-hmm. very prestigious, like firm and stuff. Yeah. Like I can't say his name. Yeah. Because I don't want pe- – because he's a very unique name mm-hmm. and I don't want people to find him because I've had, like, weird people, like, threaten to, like – Oh, all the time. You know, all this crazy shit. Yeah. And there was even a point that I was dealing with this weird kind of stalker guy who was – and I had to, like, delete all of our photos together mm-hmm. on Instagram, which, like, mm-hmm. broke my heart. It was kind of, like, earlier in our relationship because yeah. I, like, loved him and I was proud of him and this is someone I wanted to spend the rest of my life mm-hmm. with. And I was like, I can't, like – Nope. I can't like associate you yeah. in my life. Like that sucks. And even right. now, like I do post pictures of him on Instagram, but very rarely. And then we have a daughter, which I never post on yeah. uh, my public Instagram ever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, even like I have to hide that part of right. my life. Just to protect your family. And yeah. I remember like when when this hit like TMZ, when it went started to go a little viral, I called my parents and I was like, if anybody asks you about this, just tell them you don't know me. You know, like just – don't say anything. Tell him you don't know me. Tell him you don't have a daughter. I don't know. Because I really, I don't want my family to feel any type of brunt for the choices that I've made. Yeah. 
I just don't think that's fair. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's the hard part too when people were like digging up my personal details and my background and like sending it to my family and, and DMing it to my friends and, you know, and I'm just like, for what? For what? Like, you yeah. think that's going to ruin my life? I already know the choice that I've made and what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, and my parents know. Yeah. Like, what are you trying to do? Out me? Like, yeah. I'm a grown woman. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> you know, so it's just, yeah. The being do you have a good life. relationship with your family? I do. Yeah, I do. They, they started off, I told them that I did porn a year into doing porn because mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure this is what I wanted to do. Right. And I selfishly wanted to be a little bit successful mm -hmm. before... I told them anything. So if I had got a nomination or I won something, I was like, that's when I'll tell them because mm -hmm. they can be proud of me mm -hmm. in some weird way. And well, I also, did. I think that they can see that it was a path that made sense that you chose, right? Because it's leading you somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had goals. I was making money. I was taking care of myself, you know. So I waited a little bit. I told them. Their initial reaction was, well, we're proud of you no matter what you do. And I was like, oh, I know you don't mean that, you know. So I kind of like braced myself for the storm and my mom called me back the next day in tears like how could you do this like what and I go stop googling okay yeah don't do that that's really icky don't yeah. you see any of that I told you not to um and then it took probably about six months for us to be back where we started right you know now they'll ask me where are you traveling to how are your shoots going they don't want to know details right but they're trying really hard to be involved whereas I was like listen I lied to you for a year it's not going to change your life now that you know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and tell you things you don't want to hear. We can just yeah. how's the weather, you know? Yeah. And we do. We're we're still close like we were. So yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Can you imagine? Oh my god, porn stars' parents still love them. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird concept. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people who, unfortunately, sadly, like their relationship with their parents is split because of that. But it was usually pretty strained before that. They were mm -hmm. having issues before that. Mm -hmm. And then it was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's yeah. back. And then other, you know, I've heard a lot of stories where at first it was hard for them to to swallow. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, um, Holly. But, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, then, you know, I mean, like one of my favorites was like Alina Lopez. Like she comes from like a Mormon family. And then like, you know, her and then her mom like made her AVN dress and her parents like went with her to the show. So my two oldest sisters were my assistants at ABN this year. That's awesome. And helped me through everything. So, you know, walking the red carpet, handing out photos to fans. Yeah. So it did it did a 180. Yeah. You know, and I'm very lucky because I know not everybody has it that way. But um, I think the key is just like honesty and giving people time. Yeah. You know, I did not expect them to accept it in any way, shape, or form. And so I was happy with any type of progress that we made, you know. Right, right. And also I think, like, it takes a while for people – because there's so many misconceptions about the adult mm -hmm. industry, you know, that every woman is trafficked and that you're always in unsafe situations right. and you have no control mm -hmm. over, like, how the scene goes. Mm -hmm. And obviously those situations occur. Mm -hmm. But, you know, especially – For if, me, that's rare. If right. If it's happened at all, right. you know. And so – I think that I don't plan, I'm not an ambassador for the industry at all, but I do like to share my story because it's been a very wonderful experience mm -hmm. across the board. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Well, I think a lot of that has to do with making the right decisions with the right people. Brazzers yeah. is a great company to start mm -hmm. with. They really take care of their girls. They you started, yeah, yeah, you started off slow with, yes. you know, camming where mm -hmm. you had control over your content and what you could yeah. do and you set boundaries and you, and you stuck to them. So yeah. there's there's a right and a wrong way to get into the adult industry, I think. Definitely. And it also depends on like how you really at your core feel about it. Yeah. You know, if it's something that you truly like can become and are comfortable with, mm -hmm. then you're gonna have a great experience. If it's something that like you really like actually don't want to do and and yeah. you're doing it for the wrong reasons, then that's gonna affect you. No, hundred percent. I started out only shooting like two scenes a month. Yeah. Which is nothing. Yeah. You know, and then I go home and cam and like whatever. And I just remember being like, I love being on set. I want to do this more. So I was mm -hmm. making more frequent trips to LA. More people were interested in me. And now it's kind of switched where I love being on set more than I love doing anything else. Mm -hmm. But I think if I hadn't taken it slow like that, mm -hmm. I don't know if it would have been the same. Yeah. 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 So um, last question about this whole uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. debacle yeah. with Sean. Um, <laughs> I, know, I can like laugh about it now because yeah. like – it's funny to me, you know, I'm not, 
at you know there were there was a period of time where I was a little heartbroken and mm-hmm. then I was just straight afraid. Like I was just scared of the amount of attention I was getting and how horrible people were being. Yeah. And I put out you know, I felt like I had no control over the narrative, even though TMZ asked me for comments and stuff. And I was just like, I'm just going to stay out of it, you mm-hmm. know, like, so I didn't get a chance to like tell my side of the story or have any kind of whatever. And they wanted to paint me as like a victim. And I was like, oh, it's kind of a mutual decision, you know, mm-hmm. like whatever. But um, I had posted a Insta reel of me and Johnny Sins. And I was like, don't worry, guys, I'm fine. I found a better bald man. <laughs> and people fucking hated that. I was such a bitch for saying that. You know, you just proved what a hoe you were or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, number one, I'm allowed to rebound. Okay. Mm-hmm. And number two, everyone fucks Johnny Sins. Okay? Yeah. If you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, just, yeah. And it was an old reel anyway. And, you know, but I just, yeah, it's like when other people are allowed to turn the media, but when you do it, yeah. you're like, what a what a horror! Yeah, you know. And I'm like, oh, you know, come up with something new to call yeah. me. Yeah, I have a solution for you. Oh, don't read the comments, dude. <laughs> I need to hear that 15 times a day because I, I read everything. Oh I no, read everything. No, no, stop, 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 I, it's stop. very bad. It's very bad. But I think part of it is that marketing brain that I've always had, yeah. where I want to have my finger on the pulse of what's happening. Mm-hmm. What type of message do I need to be sending out? What's the common denominator here? Um, and yeah, it it. Yeah, it wasn't a good time. So it went from like heartbreak, the whole situation it was like heartbreak to like straight up fear. Like my hair was falling out. I was crying every day because I couldn't handle. And then, and I got a lot of flack from inside the industry too. People thought they knew my personal life. They knew me. They had this whole opinion. I had people being like, you're not a good representative for the industry. It's just another example about how you know porn stars can't don't deserve real love and whatever. Like how dare you make us look like this? Thank you. I was like, what? What? Like, there's a lot of different ways you can go with that, but that was a common one. Um, And then everybody thought it was a publicity stunt, which is fine. I get it. Mm -hmm. It seemed like one. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I could have probably done a better one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what I did. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. So yeah, the inside the industry hate was kind of tough too. And then I think after a few weeks, I was just like, all right. It's died down. There's no more new information. No one cares anymore. And I was able to like laugh about it. Yeah. You know, because you you can. You can laugh about your exes. Yeah. Because it's fucking funny. Do you think that you would ever date a celebrity again? Or would this give you pause? I would. I would because I feel like I appreciate people that are busy and driven and have their own shit going on. Mm -hmm. I'm too independent to be like Mm -hmm. travel around with someone or like, I don't know. But I would do it totally different. If they wanted it to be a media circus, I'm along for the ride. Mm -hmm. If they don't, then it is completely silent. Don't take me to events. I will sign an NDA. Like, just give me the path and we'll take it. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Because I I like people. I like relationships. And I don't like to play games. Yeah. I'm too old for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't have the energy for that. So I think that's part of it, too, is if you want it to be private, tell me that and we'll just do that. Yeah. You know? I mean, I can't imagine dating somebody and having to like try to keep it secret and make, but then again, I've never dated a well, celebrity. Like, so what do I know? Right. Yeah. No one fucking drops into my DMs yeah. and, unless they're trying to. I liter- doubt that. Okay. The o- I swear to God, what the only you- DMs I get are from people who are trying to like run my OnlyFans page. Oh, no. <laughs> get so God. many of those. Hey, girl, I have an opportunity for you. Oh, my God. You should. And I it's always a hot chick. Yeah. And it's definitely not her Ooh. writing to you. Hey, you should really hook up with my agent. They could really like grow I your only. They're still taking so people on the roster and you're just like <laughs> exactly okay. they're all like i just delete yeah. them just delete 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 yeah. um but yeah no i've never had a i've never had a celebrity slide into my dms ever yeah. i i attract um football players and youtubers hmm. and that's it hmm. and i love that i love that little niche of little weirdos yeah they're fucking great yeah you know but i just um I, I'm not interested in like just going to dinner and like meeting up with people, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not ready for that yet. Number one. And number two, like it's so much of a hassle to yeah. like be in the public eye or have them be in the public eye and try to date. If you could choose like the perfect mm-hmm. man, like what is your ideal partner? I have not thought about that. Wow. Wow. I need, I need to think about, I'm going to talk to my therapist about that one. <laughs> Thanks. Um, no, I think I like people that are 
highly intelligent, a little on the nerdy side. I like to be the hot one in the relationship. Mm -hmm. okay? I get it. So I don't give a shit what you I want to be like. the star. I want to be the star. Yeah, no, I don't like to date guys that are I'm like not... hotter than me. No, no. I want no. you to wake up and be like, wow, how am I with you every single day? Like, Because <laughs> I'm so insecure and vain that I need that, you know? At least I know that about myself. Self-awareness is like, I, I think one of the greatest traits that yeah. you can have and yeah. so many people don't have it's it. It's just, yeah, it's just not going to change. So, but I think that's a plus for, you know, all the kind of average dudes out there. I'm your girl. Like, hey, average dudes, you have a chance please, with Melissa. Please DM me. Please. <laughs> yeah. And I like, I like guys on the shorter side too. 5'10 is kind of my. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to look you in the eyes. I don't want to. Yeah. Up yeah. 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 Me, you know. What about, what about penis size? Is that important? Um, You know, it used to not be but i think the older i get the more i know my body and i just like medium mm. just medium okay now what's medium because people want to know yeah, specifics probably porn medium probably like seven inches okay six seven mm -hmm. and like a decent girth okay not anything crazy mm -hmm. but um yeah smaller than that and it's like okay we got to find the right position mm -hmm. can't just do any one to like mm -hmm. hit that spot and then the super big i mean that's clocking in like yeah. i don't i didn't want to come to work today <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. jesus christ so yeah, yeah so just like your, medium mm -hmm. but if you met the right guy who was a little bit on the smaller or bigger side oh yeah that sounds it. great mm-hmm yeah, okay. hundred percent. Because at the end of the day, it, like chemistry is so important, and I think the more I do porn, the more I find non-sexual things sexual. So mm. it's the way you hold my hand, it's the way you touch my neck. I love when guys play with my hair. Like little things like that are a huge turn on. Like pussy wet, and men don't. They kind of take that for granted. You know, mm. they're like, okay, I gotta eat her out. I gotta do that, and it's like you don't. You don't have to do that right now. Like, mm -hmm. I like more simple, good kissers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think the foreplay gets lost a lot. I had um, sexologist uh, Caitlin V on the other day, yeah. and we were talking about, like, the differences between men and women and nature. arousal and levels of arousal mm -hmm. and time of arousal. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why do you think that nature has made it so that it takes, like, t women, like, oh, on average 20 minutes to get yeah. aroused and men, like, instantly? Yeah. And... um now I'm going to forget exactly what she said. Mm -hmm. Go back and watch my episode with yeah. Caitlin, we'll which will them. come out before this one to get the exact answer. But it was yeah. something along the lines of, um, I don't want to say men are disposable, but it was something Interesting. similar to that. Because like one man can impregnate a lot of women, yeah. but women can only bear one child yeah. at a time. So I think it's like Quality. nature's- Quantity. Yeah, yeah, it's like nature's selection mm -hmm. process. So if you can get a woman to that that space, mm -hmm. then you're a better partner and a better choice for her ah, to there it is. Yeah. have the child. Mm -hmm. um, because women are more likely to get pregnant if they orgasm. Yes. Yeah. So it's like it's that whole kind of thing. It's like a it's like an ingrained selection process in women. Oh, I that's guess. so cool. Yeah. 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 Because I definitely, as I've gotten older too, I find myself being more. Is it sapiosexual? Sapiosexual? Where it's sapiosexual like, when you're more attracted to people who are intelligent, like their yes. minds and stuff. Yeah. Like that. So if you laugh at my jokes and you're looking me in the eye, like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done for. Yeah. You know. But if you're doing that, hey baby, I'm gonna give you the best. You know, mm -hmm. four hours of sex of your life. I'm like, oh God, please. Oh, no. <laughs> get out of here you know that's not the foreplay I yeah need, so. and i also wonder too that if it's something along the lines of if a man is willing to spend that amount of time to get you to that place yeah. then he's gonna stick around yeah. after the baby and Ooh. be there to help raise oh and protect it you know yeah like there's so many different interesting that's ways to look at that so yeah yeah so that's me maybe I'm, maybe my body's like time to have a baby <laughs> Find you so, a smart so, guy that's going to stick So around. men that will spend a lot of time on foreplay, it just means you're more highly evolved. Yes. And Darwinism favors you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> my uh, my body knows that for sure. Yeah. Because so. it, it's funny like what our bodies know that like our minds don't necessarily know or yes. won't acknowledge, that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like our bodies respond to things in different ways mm -hmm. than like or we want them to. Yeah. Have you ever liked somebody and you're like, God, they just give me the fucking ick now, but I can't yeah. figure out. It's like I liked them so much. Like, yeah. Wow, like that's happening to me a lot lately. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I just don't like you anymore. Yeah. You know? And I no, you. I had a partner that I was with for a long time and we mm -hmm. were trying to get pregnant and um I and I was like having pain when we had sex. And I finally went <gasps> to a gynecologist and I was like, What's wrong with me? And they like did all the tests and the scans. 
And he was like, there's nothing wrong with you. Like physically, you're fine. And then he sat down and said this thing to me that I swear to God, like changed my life. And he goes, do you actually like him? And I was like, (gasps) what? And he was like, because I think it's your body telling you. Oh, And I was like. I've had that. No, I don't. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't want to like to admit it to myself. Mm-hmm. So I love those online comments of guys being like, you know, my my girlfriend's like bad in bed or like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, she just doesn't like you. You know what I mean? Like all yeah. those Reddit threads of like, am I the asshole? It's like yeah. somebody tell her that she doesn't like him and it's okay to leave. Yeah. Because you know? yeah, I think we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's complicated. Yeah. So what are your uh, goals for the future? I want to keep doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I want to keep doing good work. I want to do more features. I just want to shoot more. That's always my goal is Mm -hmm. to like shoot more. And I want to, I want to make better content. I feel like I started off doing like really basic boy girl. I want to do things that are a little more beautiful, a little more sexy, a little more push in the edge. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be really selective with who I work with and Mm -hmm. how I get things done. Um, but I also, uh, this year, I inked a deal with Hustler to do three live shows at their club. So I finally got to live out my little baby stripper dreams. That was on my bucket list. Oh, wow. So yeah, so this weekend I have the last two shows. And I'm super excited. So that was like a big thing for me this year. Um, so this so yeah. coming weekend, Easter weekend. Yeah, like uh, tomorrow. Oh, wow. Saturday, Saturday. So for those of you who are Patreon members and boy, are you lucky and smart to be Patreon members. You are watching this live (laughs) and we are talking about Easter weekend. So um, the last weekend in March. So you're getting the, um, you know, you're getting the you're getting the, the, the skinny hot tea. Yeah. 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 So if you're in Vegas or Oklahoma City, so Vegas on Friday and Oklahoma City on Saturday, you can come meet me live. Which I mean the only other times you can meet me live are at conventions, which mm-hmm. are hectic and crazy. And you know, this is a little different atmosphere. And I have I've done one show already and it was like amazing. So thank you to Hustler for that opportunity. But um yeah, I just I wanna just do more. I wanna continue on what I'm doing and I wanna have longevity in this business. So I'm just kinda Taking it, taking it at my pace. You know? So this, and so this is gonna be at the Hustler Club. Like, what's the club? Yeah. So in Vegas, it's the Hustler Club, and then in Oklahoma City, it is Little Darlings. Okay. Is a like a Hustler group. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, so those two, and I've got it posted on all my socials and right. on their pages and stuff too. So you can't miss it. But yeah, it's gonna be a good time. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to do a little uh, bonus Q&A for Patreon members as well oh, nice. uh, after this. So another great reason to join my Patreon. Yeah. But in the meantime, Melissa, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Oh, yeah. That's super easy. MelissaStratton.com. All my links are there. Wow. That was fast. Mm-hmm. All right. You can also go to hollylinks.com and find all of my links there or at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter or X. And then, of course, as I previously mentioned, um, join my Patreon for access to live streams like this, bonus Q&As, and so much other content, patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye.